Who are you to not be amazing? Who are you to not go big? We're about to go big with dragons in art. Of course, you know all about dragons. They've been portrayed all over the world and in various stories and situations. Each depiction of dragons in generations becomes iconic within itself. So gather around, dragon connoisseurs. Let's look at the greatest depictions of dragons and let's give this big five their due. Making this list, we're looking at originality, popular depictions, and unique finds. Artistic execution isn't always the mark with these, but it does factor in afterward. First up for the Genesis Award, we'll go back to the Inception, the base point lore of the medieval dragon, Lancelot Tales, where the knight goes to slay the dragon and save Sleeping Beauty and all that jazz. But before Lancelot, there was George. As it goes, George was a Christian Roman soldier who refused to renounce his faith and was beheaded for it under the Diocletian persecution of 303. But as legends appear in the record about 1,000 or so, George had a remarkable event occur. As legend has it, there was a town which a dragon would spew venom and torment the countryside. So to prevent the dragon from bothering the town, they had offered sheep, men, and finally their youth, which was chosen by way of lottery. So one day the king's daughter came up in the lottery princess and she was sent in bride's clothing to the swamp where the dragon resided to be eaten but it was at this time george happened to be strolling by and when the dragon emerged he charged at it wounding it and then brought it to the town to present and request the people convert to christianity and he would slay it and so it happened this story has similarities to saint francis and brother wolf though brother wolf had a happier ending but I digress. So for this depiction, I've chosen Raphael's rendition, simply because he's the most well-known. There's plenty of earlier medieval flat portrayals of the scene, but here we have a basic sense of the information we get there. And you'll notice this dragon, it's not very imposing. Like most of the other portrayals, it's like the size of a dog. Anyway, this dragon takes the Genesis Award for kicking off the medieval European and subsequent pop culture depictions of slaying the dragon and, and a third of England being named George, with Nigel and Charles probably taking the other two thirds. Isn't that how it works? Next up, nipping at the heels of the George's Dragon for the Hitchhiker Award is the Placidusax. The Placidusax is the Skyrim depiction of a massive dragon. It's really what you get when you take the George legend and just put it on steroids. The George dragon looks so wimpy when it's had what, a thousand years now to have grown into the kind of monster we've come to expect. It's the baddest looking dragon imaginable. When we think of dragon, this is top tier. It's massive, it has two heads, massive wings, breathes fire. Placidusax and other dragons of Skyrim universe first brought to life and conceptualized by Adam Adamwitz and Ray Wetterer, concept artists for Bethesda games. Unlike others on this list, we can actually see this dragon moving and in action. Next up, taking the Bigfoot award is the Pisa Bird. The Pisa Bird is a Native American depiction of something like a dragon or a griffin, but with other characteristics such as antlers, a human face, talons, a long tail, all covered in scales. The artist behind the depiction is unknown, but it's believed to have been done around 1000 AD when the Cahokia civilization was thriving about the Mississippi floodplain area of present-day United States. It was made with red, black, and green coloring. In 1673, French explorers Louis Jolet and Jacques Marquette, accompanied by Eleni tribesmen, explored the Mississippi River. Marquette noted in his journal that when they were getting close to the painting on the bluffs, the Eleni knew it was coming up and were scared of it. He then made a rough sketch of what he saw. Since then, the original painting was lost to limestone mining along the river, and the painting that now exists, a replica interpretation. When we're talking about dragons, we can't not talk about the most obvious and widely known portrayal from China. That's why the Chinese dragon gets this video serious award. There are dragon depictions in China and Asia going back thousands of years. Where the European portrayals of dragons is more reptilian nature with small eyes, small nostrils, and evil, the Asian portrayal is much different with large eyes, large raised nostrils, typically elongated, serpentine bodies with scales, quadrupeds, talons. The Asian dragon is usually ethereal. This all culminates together nicely in Shinrong's painting Nine Dragons from 1244. The drawing gives a dreamy depiction of dragons in the clouds.
clouds set along Dallas philosophy. It's done on paper and is a staggering 19 inches tall by 589 inches long. Beautiful work. Rounding out today's Big Five with the Sunday Deluxe is the Leviathan, portrayed by Gustave Doré in Paradise Lost. The image is a woodcut that is sometimes seen in color. The biblical Leviathan is proportionally similar to the Chinese dragon in that it's a massive, elongated creature. It's got a scaly body, massive nostrils, and breathes fire, or at least emits very hot air. However, the Leviathan is more earthly, less ethereal creature. If it were to exist as stated, it's placed in the only environment it could actually live, the sea. Given that it's a sea creature, if we really gave this a deep dive, we could surmise that it might even be possible there could be a mechanism for it to expel fire. For example, if it's long, like an electric eel, if it had similar glands charged, it could charge a concentrated flammable biological gas like methane. You could potentially have fire. There have been various depictions of Leviathan with creatures called Leviathan. The most modern portrayals are close to the dragons we see in Skyrim. There's nothing wrong with that. There's just something more endearing, regal, and mysterious with Doré's Leviathan that is being swallowed into the sea as God approaches them. It's unclear, almost grainy quality. The same way horror films like the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Black Christmas, Halloween, Friday the 13th, and so on were all way creepier than anything today simply because the film quality was lower, which added an element of sort of uncertainty. It, it had an edge that it was added to the experience. So that's why Doré's Leviathan gets the Sunday Deluxe. Beautiful composition, masterful execution, includes all the elements of portraying a dragon you'd look for composited into one and so that's amazing and that's big that's dragon before you jump off though give me a shout out and make sure you check out some of these other new artists making uh, very cool depictions of dragons out there if you like this check out more give a like subscribe see you in the next video